I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. Hi. I've had a couple of encounters with these beasts I would like to share with you. First, let me explain. I grew up in the woods hunting and fishing and hiking, and I know what animals are out there. In other words, I know what a bear is and what is not. I was born and raised in Bellingham, Washington, which is where these two stories took place. Anyway, the first encounter took place in a small neighborhood near where I grew up. Granted, it was a long time ago, I was nine years old at the time, and I'm 57 now, but I remember it like it was last night. My brother and I were staying at a friend's house and sitting on his front porch. We could hear some dogs barking in the distance, which were getting closer and closer to us. Before long, there is this hairy, man-like thing running across the lawns of the houses across the street from us with about five or six dogs chasing it. It appeared to be about seven or eight feet tall and was covered in hair from top to bottom. It was running very fast on two legs with its arms kind of stiff down to its sides. Maybe a juvenile? That was on the outskirts of Bellingham, where there were a lot of woods around at the time. The second occurrence was four years later, when my brother and I were together on a deer hunting trip up the north fork of the Nooksack River. This area, incidentally, is known for some sightings. My brother and I met up in some green timber. It was snowing pretty heavily at the time, with big, heavy, wet flakes that were accumulating at a fairly rapid pace on the ground. We came upon some tracks that looked like human barefoot tracks, but they were about 15 to 17 inches long. As I said, it was snowing pretty good at the time, and there was no snow in the tracks, so this thing was there, just ahead of us. The snow was heavy and wet, so the tracks were as perfect as they could be. We could clearly make out each toe, ball of the foot, heel, etc. Unfortunately, this was way before anyone carried cell phones, so no pics. We followed the tracks for a couple hundred yards in some denser brush and decided we should turn around and head back to the pickup, as it was getting to be dusk. Jim Hi, I'll start off by telling you I'm an 18-year veteran military police. I became a local police officer here in East Texas. My mother's dad was Choctaw First Nations American. He always told me stories about the big one. I just thought of them as stories. But when I was 10 in 1983, my mother and stepdad were driving me back up to my dad's in Paris. As we crossed the Sulphur River, I looked down into the river as I always had to see how full it was. I saw a huge, red, long-haired man, but he was covered with it. It just stood there and looked at us and watched us pass. I looked at my mum, and her face was blank, mouth wide open and eyes just as big. I asked her, Did you see that? She just shook her head yes. Now I live in a small community in East Texas, and I have 14 acres. I'm an avid hunter, always have been. I live in a small one-bedroom cabin on a two-acre pond. I've had my cabin slapped and rocks thrown on my tin roof. So, anyway, hunting season comes close, and here in Texas, we can have feeders. I was going out to add corn to them, so I took a twenty-two for snakes. That's all. As I was about to walk around a bush, all of a sudden, this thing came alive. I mean, the bush was shaking. The big oak tree next to it was shaking. So, I stopped walk backwards a bit, watching this, thinking that maybe a black bear had come on my property. This thing kept on like crazy. I kept walking backwards, thinking, whatever this is, all I have is this twenty-two. I have to aim for the eye. I kept walking backwards. The further away I got, the more this thing would calm down. Look, at the time, I was forty-six years old, and I've hunted all my life, and I've never run out of my own woods. But... This day, I did. I reached out to a friend who knew a few guys from the BFRO. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have a lot of faith in these guys, but I didn't know what I was facing. They came out for a weekend. They went into my woods and found a 17-inch barefoot print in a creek bed. If I didn't see it myself, I wouldn't have believed them. Then we started hearing chattering like I've never heard before in the woods. I now know they are real. 
I think they come through during the fall and winter, and I don't hunt my woods anymore, not knowing what I know now. Back when I was around 21 or 22 years old, I was living in North Florida, in Cottondale, Florida to be exact, and a friend of mine asked if I wanted to go hunting on a piece of land that his dad owned, and my friend's dad owned a huge piece of land, like over 2,000 acres, in Compass Lake, in the hills of Florida, about 15 to 20 miles from my house. So, I remember I had a 306 rifle, and my friend had a 308 rifle, and we left to go hunting around 4 p.m., I remember the drive into the property was all unfamiliar to me. Now, I've hunted in a tract close to this property before, but I still didn't know the layout of this property and told my friend just before we parked that what if we got separated and that I've never been here before and I was also worried because I left my truck at my house and we drove to the property where he was going to hunt in a two-man tree blind. My friend laughed and said nothing to worry about and he knew the land and he said he was worried about nothing. Well, he was wrong. We got to where we were parking the truck, and we had to walk over a solid hour from the truck to the hunting stand. And so we're walking in, I noticed that there was literally no animal life at all. No birds, no squirrels, no deer tracks, or any sign that life ever lived there. It was just a quiet, almost dead feeling walking into those woods. We walked a fire trail the most of the way back to the hunting stand, so I don't know, around 5.30 p.m., we made it to the stand, and we climbed up and got settled in. Well, I'm a great thinker and problem solver, so I was sitting there thinking that it was 5.30, and so it gets dark around 8. So this time of year that we were hunting, so in my head I did the math and told my friend in a soft voice, so we didn't scare away any of the deer or hogs or anything, I told my friend that, hey bud, we might want to head back in about an hour or a little over, because I certainly did not want to walk on a track that I wasn't familiar with back to the truck in the dark. So, again, my friend laughed at me and said, no worries, brother, and that we had plenty of time before we had to leave. An hour went by, then more time, and so I finally said to my friend, look, I'm heading back with or without you, but I'm leaving now. So my friend said okay and called me a wuss, so we climbed down and headed back to the truck, with maybe 30 to 45 minutes left of daylight. So we're about halfway back, or a little closer, and just like that, we had no light at all. It was dark, and we didn't bring a flashlight with us. And I remember walking behind my friend when I started smelling a dead and wet dog or animal smell, and it was awful. It would gag a maggot it smelled so bad. Now, around 20 minutes or so from the truck, we started walking on a small trail or fire trail, and we were getting closer to a little island of trees that sits right in the middle of the trail, just in front of us around 50 yards away. As we got closer, the smell got stronger and stronger, but we just put it off as a dead buzzard or a skunk. So, about 20 yards from the thick island of trees in front of us, all of a sudden there was this big bang in that island of trees in front of us, and my friend and myself stopped dead in our tracks. I told my friend, Hey, what was that? And he was so scared he couldn't even answer me. So I told my friend, look, something big is in that island of trees just in front of us. And now, how are we going to get out of here and back to the truck? And just as my friend was about to say something, there was a noise that I will never forget. It was a roar that was so loud that the decibels shook the ground around us. So I grabbed my friend and said, we have to go and go now. So we started walking away from the trees, forward to the right-hand side, to stay as far away as possible from the Bigfoot in those thickets of trees. And around ten steps into it, it started to roar again, and it hit the trees with a log or something. To be honest, I'm 250 pounds of muscle, and have been a football athlete all my life, and never been scared of anything. But this was different. I know that Bigfoot would rip me and my friend apart with no problem. So, to be honest, I dropped my gun and ran for my life back to the truck. As for my friend, he still had his gun, and he's only 160 pounds wet, and I still made it back to his truck about two minutes before he did, and that's saying something because of our sizes that my friend should have beat me back first. And remember, I don't know this property as well. So, when we jumped in the truck, I looked at my friend and said, I dropped my gun, 
Let's go now. So I remember we drove home in less than half the time it should have. And when my friend dropped me off at my house, he said to me, What the F was that? And I told him that he knew what it was. And I told him, never go anywhere near that property again. My friend said, Well, you dropped my dad's prize gun and that he'd have to go back and get it. I told him, good luck, and not to go in the dark, ever. So, I never told anybody what happened that night, but the next day my friend showed up at my house and said that he found the gun, but no signs of anything else. It's been over 20 years now from the Bigfoot experience I had, and now I'm 44 years old, and I felt I had to tell my story. I think me and my friend were lucky to get out of there alive. My name is Randy B. I'm a 52-year-old guy who's been fishing, hunting, and guiding for most of my life. My story began in 1996, when a good friend of mine and I were deer hunting in a place called Botany Valley, north of Lytton, near a lake called Pasolka Lake. It was late November, and there was quite a bit of snow on the ground. We set up camp below a high ridge, made a fire, and it was late, dark, and cold. Sitting around the fire having a beer, my friend said he felt like something was watching us. I, too, got a bit of an eerie feeling, but didn't want to mention it. We turned in for the night and woke up early to hike to our spot. Walking up the tree line to the ridge above our camp, we found some huge human-like footprints in the snow directly above our camp. We both stopped and looked at each other. We couldn't believe this. I remember thinking we should have got out of there. It really shook me, but my buddy wanted to follow them. We followed the tracks for quite a distance into the thick forest where there wasn't any snow. I think one of us even took some pictures. Wish I knew where they were now. I was on the edge the rest of that hunt and couldn't wait to get out of there. A few months later, I contacted a Bigfoot researcher. His name was Rene and explained everything that we saw, and I think he recorded it somewhere. My hunting buddy and his wife were down for a visit from Barrier a couple of weeks ago, and I mentioned that Botany Valley hunting trip. He's never told anyone about those tracks we saw, and I didn't want to talk about it in front of his wife. I've never told anyone besides that researcher, because I don't want people to think I'm nuts. Anyway, I consider myself lucky to have never run into one of these things face to face. The footprints scared the hell out of me enough. Cheers. My name is Mark. I'm willing to take a polygraph to assure that what I tell you is exactly what happened. I'm 60 years old and born in 1960. I have two brothers, one 14 months older and one 26 months younger. This story happened between 1969 and 1971. We were living in Lincoln City, Oregon. My dad had three river lots along the Silent River on the south side upstream about a mile from the highway bridge where the natural gas pipeline crosses the river. My dad bought a Honda 70 trail bike that was gold in color, three-speed automatic, and me and my brothers and I would take turns with it at the river lots while our dad was fishing. As we got more confident with riding the Honda, the area we rode expanded. The road to the property was built through wetlands like a dike road. We started riding clear to the main road, which was gravel back then, but paved now. A spur road off the dike road to the east was an access to the pipeline that went over the hills. One day, I decided on my turn with the Honda, I was going to go to that spur road. As I was going on the road, it started going uphill. I had only been on level ground and was not happy with my choice of the spur road. I wanted to turn around, but needed to find a wide area to do so. As I approached, about a hundred feet away, I saw something cross the road. It was three to four feet tall, black, and on two feet. It went into the wide area on the left, so now I don't want to stop there, and I was a bit scared. As I approached the spot where it crossed, I looked to the left, and there it was, standing in front of a bigger one that was like seven or eight feet tall, and had an arm across the chest of the small one. The third one was like 10 or 11 feet tall. Yes, there were three of them together. I was really scared at this point and hit the throttle of the Honda and kept going. 
I went clear to the river and the road stopped there. I was trying to figure out how to get back to the river lot as I could see it downstream from where I was at. I spent some time trying to figure out how to get back, but the only way was to go back the way I came. A few hours had passed and the sun was going down, so I headed down back the way I came from. As I approached the wide spot where the three were at, I was glad they were gone. Before I got all the way back, I had to turn on the lights on the bike. About a quarter mile from the river lots, I see something in the road. It was my dad. I stopped the bike and tried to talk to my dad. He was pissed and scolding me for being gone so long. He finally stopped yelling at me and wanted to know what happened. I told him the story and called them the three bears with a flat face. My dad got mad again and said bears aren't around here and they don't walk on two feet. Now I'm grounded. About a month or two later, my dad says, I'm sorry for not believing you about the bears. He said he was at the river lots and saw a bear and took a picture of him. It was a cub in a tree. The camera he used was a Polaroid instant photo he used at work. He showed me the picture and I said, that's not what I saw. And I told him the ones I saw looked nothing like that. They had no snout and a flattened nose and on two feet with long arms and a lot bigger. He got upset and said he doesn't want to hear it anymore. I never called them Bigfoot, as I never heard of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but I now know what they were. This was my first encounter, and it was a close encounter, as I was as close as 40 to 50 feet away, and I could clearly see all of them. Everything I said here is absolutely true. Thanks, Mark. Hey. First off, I'm 25, I live in the central plains of America, and have my entire life. So I can fairly say I know what wildlife is here. I've heard of and seen the majority of it. I only state that to express later how blown away I was when my encounter happened. Now to my experience. My brother, I don't want to name his name for privacy, lives on a farm with his wife and daughter. I've had to help him take care of a few pests and mountain lions before, so when he asked for my help with what he thought was another mountain lion, I said, of course. So, during the day, we looked around his land, trying to find tracks to see what we were dealing with. We found nothing. I told him I couldn't see anything and asked him if he was messing with me. He told me he was absolutely sure because of the sounds he heard the days before. I have to stop for a second to describe the area we were in. He has a built-in pond, probably 30 yards away from the tree line. Then, on the opposite side of us, is the house, about 100 yards away. We were about 15 to 20 yards away from the pond. I don't understand how we didn't find any tracks. Now, as I was explaining, there was a loud splash in the water of the pond, and he has no fish. I turned and pointed my Mossberg 3030 at the tree line. My brother had his 870 express mag pointed in the same direction. We both exchanged the same look of, what the hell was that? Then he called out, this is private property. Come out and all is forgiven. No cops, no danger, and no harm done. After shouting, he lowered his aim and put a hand in the air for good faith, and I lowered mine as well. There was an odd silence for about 30 seconds. Then a scream I can only describe as something from Jurassic Park came from the tree line. I jumped and almost fell backwards, and I'm not easily frightened. I aimed back at the tree line, expecting a chorus of mountain lions to come out. My aim dropped when this human-shaped object came out of the tree line that had to have been well over eight feet tall. My brother responded by calling out to the object that it has 15 seconds to clear off or it will be fired on. He started counting. By the time he hit six, it began walking towards us. We relaxed a little because we thought, oh hey, whoever this guy is, is leaving. That thought left when it stopped and let out another yell. After feeling it in my chest, I knew it was going to end badly. That thing charged us. The only thing we could do is hide behind our four-wheelers, run, or attempt a fight. I've never fired all four of my rounds as fast as that day, and this thing stopped charging and just looked at us. 
then just turned around and walked back into the tree line. We started the four-wheelers and drove back to the house, grabbed two of his AR-15s, a few mags, and his dog Buckley, then went back to the pond. After searching the area with Buckley, we found zero blood. There were prints, but no blood. My lever action holds four with an empty chamber. My brother's 870 Express Magnum holds four empty chambers. So four 3030 and four slugs have no blood? How is that possible? We both have no explanation, and yes, we are absolutely sure of what we saw. We took pictures of the prints, and my brother has yet to tell his wife. He fears she'll mock him or leave him thinking he's crazy. Stay safe out there. C. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com.